Hi everybody, Rob here again at Power Learning Solutions and what I would like to talk about today is how to create some clean, easy to read and accessible pages that are going to maximize the engagement for your students when you're creating content in a course in a learning management system. Now, who wouldn't want to create the most engaging pages for their students and the most accessible pages and the ones that are going to maximize students' ability to interact with the information. Well, there's a few things that uh, you need to keep in mind when you're creating these pages. And this video was actually inspired by a bunch of questions that I've recently received from some of my instructional design students about whether or not they should use tables to organize their content on their pages to make it easier to read the content. Now, the first thing that you need to keep in mind when you are creating good clean pages for your students is the general principles of user experience or user interface design and how that content is going to be experienced by students on different devices. You have to keep in mind that these days, most of our content is actually consumed using portrait screen devices, such as mobile devices or tablets viewed in portrait mode, even though we're producing most of our content using landscape orientation screens, traditional orientation for computer monitors. So you want to keep mobile first instructional design in mind, the principles of mobile first instructional design when creating your pages. That is essentially, you want to avoid designing your pages so that they're optimized for viewing on a landscape screen with a big monitor. We tend to put as much as we can on, uh, on those screens uh, and maximize that landscape view, organizing things from left to right to be able to view them. And it doesn't work that way when we look at things in portrait view and when we look at things in a smaller screen. When we talk about mobile first instructional design, we want to keep that smaller screen and that portrait view in mind. We want to optimize the presentation of our content so that nothing is lost from the learning experience when viewed on a smaller screen and when viewed from top to bottom as opposed to left to right. When we get into some fancier uh, coding, such as using Bootstrap UI, using div tags and things like that, you can create uh, certain rules so that some new content appears when you go up to a bigger screen. But we're not going to worry about that for this video. We're going to stick to straight uh, design using rich text editors that are built into our learning management system. So you want to optimize it for top to bottom viewing and for optimal viewing on a smaller screen. You also want to make sure that you are avoiding any violations of general WCAG 2.1 or 2.2, I believe is, is out now, um, guidelines for the display of content on web pages. So let's take a look at some issues that used to pop up in uh, some courses that I ran using the Canvas learning management system and how I've now addressed those issues for optimal user experience, optimal uh, mobile first instructional design, and for actually for the minimization of cognitive overload for our students. We want to avoid cognitive overload. So here is an example of um, how I used to present my course schedules. And this is something that I still see popping up when students are displaying their course schedules for courses that they're designing in my instructional design courses. You can see that it's designed in tabular format. You know, this would make sense when we're creating our, uh, our course syllabi. It's clean looking, it's easy to organize stuff in columns. So we're telling students what's going on in what week, the date ranges, the topics covered, any notes, anything that's due those weeks. It seems logical to present that in a uh, tabular format and on a, lands a large landscape screen, it does display fairly well. But let's take a look at what happens when we actually look at that on a portrait style screen on a mobile device. So I've got the same content open in another tab. I've switched to my developer view and I've picked a um, Samsung Galaxy style phone to show you how this would look on a mobile phone. And as you can see, 
the content here is not displaying properly. Uh, some of it is cut off on the side of the page. Uh, things are not centered properly. It's very difficult to read. And you can see that there's now a scroll bar here at the bottom. So you'd have to scroll from left to right to view all of the content. While scrolling from top to bottom is fine, we do want to minimize the amount of scrolling on a content page to maybe one screen, screen and a half for optimal cognitive load and for digestion of content for students and for maximum engagement. You don't want to have students scrolling from left to right. That creates a user interface problem. Uh, so we want to avoid that. And if we look at the next page that I have here, I'll come back into my uh, landscape view and show you. I've got this content organized in a linear fashion from top to bottom. No table. I'm using proper heading structure here to organize this. I've got this image here is tagged as decorative, so a screen reader won't pick it up. So this is optimized for top to bottom viewing. Everything reflows properly and uh, it's nice and clean looking. So it still presents the same information. Students don't have to scroll left or right and it is uh, maximizing the, uh, the cognitive impact for students or minimizing that cognitive overload for students. So I'm gonna go on to another page here now where I have some more of these issues and we can talk about some of the accessibility issues uh, that come up as well as the user interface issues. So again, I have got um, my table organized here with some content presented, an image inserted. I've got a horizontal line in here. A student asked me about using a horizontal line to, uh, to differentiate some of the content on the page and to split it up a bit. Nothing wrong with that in principle, but I'm gonna show you some issues that do pop up. And it looks fairly clean, but we do have a cognitive load issue coming up here. Some cultures read their screens from right to left, not left to right. Some people are used to reading uh, tabular content like this, columnized content, top to bottom, as opposed to reading an entire column from left to right and then going down to the next column. So you're creating cognitive load for your students to figure out what do I read first? Do I read the synchronous activities, the asynchronous activities, and then go over and read this column? Or do I read everything from left to right? Uh, and then go down to the next column. You want to avoid that, and the best way to do that is to use a linear design. Uh, you can also see that I do have the table borders in here. By default, in a lot of systems, the table will show a border uh, to differentiate the cells. That creates another cognitive load problem. If we look at this on a smaller screen, we'll go to the next page here. You can see now that I'm not scrolling left to right because this, this table is reflowing the content, but you can see that it just looks like a mess. Uh, the content is not centering properly in the table. Uh, the columns are very narrow with sometimes just a single word on a line. Makes it very difficult for students to read. And when you're looking at this on a smaller screen, these lines can actually create an accessibility issue because they'll make it more difficult to distinguish the text uh, that's on the page. It, it really does make it difficult for anyone who's got a visual acuity issue, and it forces your brain to work that much harder to pick out everything that's on the screen. So again, another reason to avoid using tables to lay out content unless we're presenting statistical data. Uh, there is another issue with using tables that creates an accessibility problem. This table that I have here does not have a header row, nor does it have column rows. So I'm not telling screen reader applications the correct order in which to read the table. So we don't know, unless we test it on every application, the order in which a screen reader will read this text out to students who have visual impairments. So we don't know if it's gonna read this cell, this one, and this one, or if it's gonna read everything in this column from top to bottom, then this one, then this one. And we want to avoid that problem. So best, to avoid using tables unless it is tabular uh, statistical data that you are presenting and you know how to properly tag your row headers or your column headers so that screen readers will read it properly. Another issue that's coming up here is this row, uh, this uh, line that I put in to create a break between some of the content. 
I did this the way that I see most of my instructional design students doing it who are not familiar with HTML coding. I used the dash key on my keyboard to create this line. Well, when we reflow this screen on a mobile device, you can see what happens. The number of dashes reflow and it creates five or six lines here and it's very unclean looking. Also, when you're using a screen reader application, that screen reader is going to read out dash, 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 dash for every single dash that you put in there. So again, something that you want to avoid. You can see now too, I have the rest of this uh, information here in linear format top to bottom, but I'm not using proper heading structure for this. I've just made the text bold to differentiate and I've inserted an extra line in here to split some of the text apart to make it look cleaner and easier to read. This again is gonna cause some problems for accessibility for some of our users. They're not gonna be able to navigate this page with their keyboard and get from section to section. It's not gonna give them any structure to the page. And every time there's a blank line with a hard return, it is going to read out blank line if you're using a, a certain screen reader applications. So again, something that we want to avoid. If we scroll on down here, you'll see how I have avoided all of these problems. There's a nice clean single line here. If I go back to this page, I'll scroll down to where I put that in. Again, a clean line. And if I edit the page, I'll show you how I added that. It involves a little bit of HTML coding. If you don't have a horizontal line option on your toolbar, then you need to actually go down to here in HTML view, find that spot. And it takes a little bit of scrolling down to find it. And you will see that I have a piece of HTML code in there that says HR for horizontal rule. That will create a line that reflows properly for you that will not be read out by a screen reader. The other thing that I have done is that I have taken all of uh, these headings and I've actually tagged them as headings so that users with screen readers can navigate from section to section and find out what they want. I'm not modifying the text here from the defaults that are built into the system. That will make sure that system administrators for your organization can define your default fonts and heading structures and color schemes at the system level with just a few lines of code. And it will make sure that your users, your students, can use some of their um, some of their accessibility options on their devices or plugins for things like the open dyslexic font to modify the font sizes and the font that's being used to make it easier for them to read. So a few rules to keep in mind when you're designing nice clean pages for your students. Avoid using tables unless you're presenting statistical data present everything top to bottom in a nice, clean, linear fashion. Doing those two things is going to maximize uh, the how clean it looks. It's gonna minimize cognitive load for your students. Make sure that you're using the heading structures so that students can navigate. Tag images with alt text if you have them in and they contain informational content. Otherwise, tag them as decorative and avoid using that dash key to create horizontal lines and avoid using your hard return to put in extra space to make things look cleaner. Use proper horizontal rule code. And if you need to put an extra line here between paragraphs for reading purposes, you would need to go to HTML view and use the BR code for a line break instead of the hard return code, which will read out a blank line to students.